Sure. Um, first, welcome back, everybody. We're all anxious to get here. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Not in this position. I like being over there, but <laughs> any event. Um, the first item on the agenda is uh, 35 Mountain Road, uh, number 2021. This matter is being continued to August 3rd. Can I have uh, a motion to continue? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, anybody who is uh, attending the meeting remotely, could you kindly remote uh, mute your uh, yourself so that uh, there's no interference uh, over the internet? And so, again. Um, 35 Mountain Road is continued to August 3rd. Can I have a motion to continue that item uh, to August 3rd? I have a motion to continue 35 Mountain Road to August 3rd. Second. Uh, having heard uh, that motion, I'm going to uh, uh, take a vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Charles? Aye. All right. Thank you. Oh, I have to do roll call. All right. Uh, so, uh, Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. And Charles? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, so, the 35 Mountain Road is continued to August 3rd. Next item on the agenda is uh, 20, number 2126, uh, Richardson Road. Uh, this is also going to be continued to August 3rd. Can I have a motion? A move to continue the Richardson Road hearing to August 3rd. Second. All right, having heard a second, take a roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. And? Charles. Aye. Thank you. The uh, Richardson Road is continued to August 3rd. Next item on the agenda is number 2114, 94 Locust Road, uh, which has been withdrawn. Can I have a uh, motion to withdraw without prejudice? Motion to withdraw 94 Locust without prejudice. Second. Okay. Uh, take a vote. Uh, at, I'm sorry, uh, Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. Okay, 94 Locust has been withdrawn without prejudice. Next item on the agenda is uh, a new hearing, 2116, Palm Italian. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. All right, great. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to bring it on the screen. Oh, you are. Great. Okay, you may proceed. Uh, uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Christine Hung of Reamer and Bronstein and attorney for the applicant, Parm, Italian, uh, Parm Burlington LLC. I have members of the project team with me tonight via WebEx and I'll introduce them as, as appropriate. Um, Parm Famous Italian is excited to be opening its first Massachusetts location here um, at the Burlington Mall in a portion of the Sears uh, building. Uh, Parm specializes in classic Italian fare um, in a casual and family-friendly environment. 
and their other locations are in New York City and upstate New York. Um, as you know, the Burlington Mall is undergoing a, um, they're reinventing the mall concept and uh, through like a transformative redevelopment with the goal to make it an integrated village-like feel with pedestrian access and walkways, with outside greens for like, congregating, al fresco dining, and um, seasonal program and community events. In addition to the exterior facade, um, in addition, the exterior facade of the building is getting a makeover, which will incorporate architectural design and features that will be comprised uh, with different materials, which will give the building like depth and visual interest. Um, we're here before you tonight um, for a request for three, for three signs. signs at the premises, and we have a short slide presentation for you. Um, yeah, I think Garrett or Maricela, can you, do you guys have the uh, presentation that you can bring up? I can, yep. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to do start video or share my screen, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Garrett Singer is with me tonight. He is um, the architect on the project team with Garrett Singer Architecture. So as he is bringing up the slide presentation, which you all have before you, um, can you see my screen yet at all or no? I can't. Not yet. Not. Okay, Sorry. hang on. Oh, I, I got it. Okay, now it is allowing me. You should be able to see the first page, your, your first page. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Garrett. So this first slide is just to orient you to the location. So you'll see in red the box corner. So the, the restaurant will be located on that corner area of the Sears building, which is um, Middlesex Turnpike is at the bottom of the page and Burlington Mall Road is to the left of the page. So it's gonna be taking up that, that corner space. Um, next slide, slide, please, Garrett. So this um, GIS aerial view shows the distance from Middlesex Turnpike, which is 840 feet from the street to the building, and then from Mall Road, it's 560 feet to that corner of the building. So it's, you know, some distance away. The slide is a GIS view of the Burlington Mall from Mall Road. As if you were, you know, driving a car down Mall Road. And where Garrett is showing you now, that is the corner location of Parm. This view is from Middlesex Turnpike, the 840 feet. So you can see that it's quite a distance away. Thank you, Garrett. Um, and so this slide is really the conceptual rendering of the vision of the new, newly repositioned Burlington Mall. So as you can see, it's there are green spaces for congregating. The um, building facade is comprised of different materials. It's not all a flat concrete like stone thing. It's different materials and bump outs just to give it kind of that architectural like a flair and to create that ambiance and village like feel for people to, you know, families to come and congregate. The, there'll be like seasonal entertainment so really not like a typical mall that you would expect, but just something like different and interesting and where people just want to hang out. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Garrett and he can walk you through the, the proposed uh, signs. Sure, I'm gonna jump to another slide real quickly. Um, so one thing I just wanna point out as part of the presentation today is to discuss the standard set forth in place for the height and width of the sign, which I understand and very much respect. 
Can you guys hear me at all or no? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, but I, but I, I'm going to interject one image uh, or, or these two slides into this presentation, um, which is th the signage presented on this project is a kind of throwback to this mid-century modern era where signage was part of the facade's design, part of its like architectural approach. And there's a certain proportional relationship to the size of the sign and the textured material on the wall, whether it be brick or tile, um, in this case, it's a breeze block. Um, and, and that was kind of our inspiration in sort of why we're asking for three signs and why we're asking for certain specific sizes that are larger than what is, is typically allowed by the town. So I, what, what I wanted to just sort of put out there is that it just wasn't arbitrary. And we know that these rules exist but there is a, a certain artistic uh, treatment that our signage is part of our design, like, like our facade as a whole, and, and less of this is the tag of our restaurant and here's the name of it, but it's part of sort of the architectural expression. So I'll go back to the presentation that was submitted to you guys. So here you're looking at both the, the Northwest view. Um, our entrance is on the right-hand side over here. So we chose to anchor one of the sides um, asymmetrically sort of anchored in proportion on the side over here. This sign is, um, I think on the drawing it's called a six one, but I think it was intended to be six foot uh, by nine foot 10 in width across. Um, and then you can see a little bit of the two other signs that we're proposing over here on this side, switch over to here. Again, this is the west side um, and you can see the sign anchored over the door and it's sort of proportions to the facade over here. And now as we turn the corner going back the other way on the north side, you can see we, we borrowed the same exact language. We have a sign anchored to the right hand corner, which is also very important because this road that approaches the building is a prominent view. This corner is, is you know, is a sort of major impact to why one would even lease this space, but that all people stop and pause here. And if there was nothing here, it's a little bit, it, it feels like something might be missing from the architecture. Um, it's a little blend. And then the vertical element that you see here, the mall has added this vertical element throughout. And for those who don't know what this initially was for, is all of the mechanical, taking Sears, and turning the lower level into restaurants in order to get the exhausting equipment and the, the, the HVAC to the roof, these shafts were created. And then they became architectural features given to each of the tenants to treat. So if you remember in that first little slide that I presented to everyone, this also was reminiscent of those nice, beautiful, long, mid-century modern sort of elements on those buildings. And we felt our sign would sit well there that, we, that this would be something that you can see from a little bit farther away. And again, here's another view of that um, from uh, the parking lot on the, the, the north side. And so the sign that we're proposing um, is a um, reverse channel, uh, rear illuminated, so it just grazes uh, the, the, the texture of the stucco or the tile on the building. Um, this is the sign that we recently just installed in the, the town of uh, Woodbury at the Simon Mall there. And then here it is. So uh, so the one thing I do want to correct is the width of 910 is correct, but the height is supposed to be six foot on both of them equal. This one is six one, and that one is 510. They were both meant to be exactly the same size. And then the signage up here is six foot nine by 10 foot one. And again, these sizes were designed proportionally by us. And I just wanna make um, a further uh, comment on that. And that is I, I took the, the 3D model and to show you kind of a side by side, this is what a four foot high maximum sign looks like over here over here and over here. And then 
what we're proposing, again, when you look at the proportions of that elevation, or if you look at the proportions of this elevation, and that one, that's the, the, the size of the sign. And again, I, I understand that this is outside and we're asking for something different here, but, but it has a clear intention. It's, it's doing good architecture unless we want to scream our name to everybody in the world. Going back and, to that presentation. And can I add that the, the sign over that second elevation is above the a, an entry door into the restaurant that is their takeout that their takeout section, which you that, know, yeah, that is correct. As, that is correct. The sign on the order. large vertical is another prominent entrance. It is a to go part of the business, which is now more common in these restaurants. And since COVID, you know, takeout is, is a large portion of many restaurants. Uh, um, you know, revenue for, for successful operation. So this is an elevation of, I believe, some of the signage that has already been previously approved by this board. And this is our space over here. And then this is the beginning of shop drawings from the local sign vendor. And the lumens will not exceed nine, 90 lumens per square foot. And the, the warmth of the lumens will also not be a very white, like very neon bright, but more like a candle light sort of warm amber light that sort of creates a proper halo. And that's the presentation. Great, great. Thank you so thank you so much. We appreciate that. And now we'll hear from the members. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts? I was just confused about the main entrance, but you clarified that. Um, so the main the main entrance on the right hand side, what, I know we approved something a couple months ago. Was it Shake Shack? Yeah, that's that's on the other side. I think Shake Shack is two two um, like they're the they're the they're the uh, okay. I have another three model. I believe this is Shake Shack right over here. That's right. So there's a there's a there's going to be a tenant in between Shake Shack and Parm. And that eight where it says eight two, that tenant is not known at the, right now. Um, okay. All right, Adam. Uh, no, no questions. I had questions about the taller sign, but I, you know the rationale I can agree with. So um, no questions at the moment. Right. Joseph? Yeah, I got a question on the second sign on the corner. Um, is that necessary to have the second sign, have two signs on the front facade? So, on the north facade, um, you know, even adding signs costs money. So, even just for like a strategy of designing a restaurant, it's not our intention to add as many signs. And the exercise internally is as simple as, if I delete that, and you're at a pedestrian scale right here, or you're in a car, th there's something that's missing there. You know, like there's something that feels appropriate with that sign being there. Like architecturally, design-wise, it feels just right. And then do the same exercise here. If you go ahead and delete that, and the mall has offered us this big, tall shaft, I'm applying expensive tile, you know, up this facade. I have stucco. We're doing stuff, but it, it wants something. It wants something to contrast it, like a, like art or you know something to, to anchor it. So again, signage. Our, the way we look at our signage, it's part of the art of the building and not just screaming who we are. And then, can I also add that because with this repositioning of the Burlington Mall, because they're trying to make it more pedestrian friendly and walkable and interconnected with the village down, you know, down the street, that 
that that second sign there is more at eye level than that top the second story which is you know at the chase that it's more eye level for for pedestrians so basically just to recap the signage over the door makes sense because you have to demark the entrance the signage on the corner makes sense because it is a really lovely corner they're creating and this is that connectivity to that other village and then if i didn't have this big shaft that we had to architecturally you know deal with i would not be coming to you to ask for permission to build the big shaft and put a sign on it um we have it we want it to look appropriate wanted to tie into with what we're doing um so it just it made sense okay no further questions yeah. Just upon uh, Joseph's comments, I, um, uh, I I was kind of in agreement with him that that uh, I don't know if we needed that second sign. But um, after I hear a further presentation, I think that uh, I think it works. I do agree with you as you approach the building from the uh, Mall Road. Uh, it's hard to get a sense for what's actually in that corner because uh, it's so I I, um, I I don't have any uh, any problems uh, with the, the signage um, seeing as this is a public hearing I'm gonna oh Charles I apologize and <laughs> I, 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 uh, yeah, no I, I, I don't really have any any comments I think the, the uh, um, signs are good um, I kind of agree that they they need that um, one on the corner. Well, normally I, would, I think on this particular one it, it, it works. So that's all I have. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Thank Charles. You, Charles. Sorry. Um, okay, it's a public hearing. I put this matter uh, out to the public. Is there anyone uh, here who wants to speak, either against or for uh, the applicant? Having heard uh, nothing from the public, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Right. And uh, take a vote. Uh, Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. All right. Um, five nothing. In favor, congratulations. Great, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you for your time and consideration. Oh, oh, all right, sorry. Are we <laughs> motion to close the public hearing? All right. Motion to, oh, motion to approve the, uh, let me have a motion to approve the signage. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Farm Italian um, for three signs as shown on plans submitted with the application dated uh, 5 4 21 with the uh, condition that lumens do not exceed uh, 90 lumens per square foot. All right, thank, All right, you, thank you, Charles. Uh, having Second. heard a motion. Second. Second. Retake that vote. Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. And I'm in, in favor as well. Five nothing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. you too. Take. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, item. On the agenda is uh, a new hearing for 2117 Francis Wyman Road. And Adam, could you read that into the record? Uh, sure. The petition of Shane Manfred, DBS 80 Manfred LLC for property located at 54 Francis Wyman Road, Burlington, Massachusetts is shown on the Burlington Assessor's records as map number 15, parcel number 12-1. The applicant is seeking a variance from the minimum frontage requirements of Burlington Zoning Bylaw, Article 5, Section 5.2.0, and dimensional requirements in Section 5.1.2.1 
5.1.2.5 to divide the property into two buildable lots. Parcel A will consist of 20,038 square feet with 40 feet of frontage on Francis Lemon Road, and Parcel B will consist of 31,133 square feet with 39.3, uh, excuse me, 39.98 feet of frontage on Francis Lemon Road. All right. You'll hear from the applicant. Hit the table is Shane Manford, who is in fact the applicant. Uh, this is property on uh, Francis Wyman Road, 54 Francis Wyman Road, um, owned by the Anderson family. They've owned it since 1970. Uh, that Mr. Manfred has it under agreement, um, subject to his ability to um, develop the lot as proposed. Um, as you can see from the plan that's before you, and I've blown it up, but they don't have any tripods here, but I'm happy to right. get to that point. Yeah. But there's a total of 51,171 square feet on this parcel of land. Um, Burlington's minimum zoning requirement is 20,000 square feet of land. So uh, it would take 40,000 square feet for two lots. So this is 11,171 square feet more than is needed for two lots typically. However, Burlington also requires 100 feet of frontage per lot. And there's a total of about 80 feet of frontage on this property here. All right. So before you tonight, requesting a variance to split this lot, the variance is going to the uh, uh, minimum uh, frontage down from 100 feet to 40 feet for one lot and 39.98 on the other. Um, on this particular lot of land, and again, I'll hold it up here because what I what was submitted is a little bit difficult to read. Mm -hmm. But the, <clears throat> if we were to go and try to subdivide this property via a subdivision approval, uh, as I said, there's over 51,000 square feet of land here. We could put a cul-de-sac in coming right off of Francis Wyman Road. Um, I have a proposal here, which I'll give to the board shortly, just showing that it can be done. Hey, hey. Um, that that cul-de-sac would take about 7,800 square feet of land to do. Hey. We have 11,171 extra square feet here. So clearly, I would submit, can be done via a, a, a subdivision. Uh, by creating a cul-de-sac, and, and right. then there would be 100 feet of frontage in each lot, and there would be over 20,000 square feet of land. Um, so, so, Mr. Chair, I'll just give these to the board. Or the next one here for Joe Rowan, too. This is just a schematic that we had um, the surveyor do. Just, it's it's not taking it out entirely, but it's just it's a, a rough. Uh, plan showing that it can be done. Yeah. With respect to getting a variance, yep, we clearly have to um, show some statutory requirements, including hardship. Uh, I would submit in this particular case, the hardship is the shape of the lot. Uh, we've got a lot that's large enough for two square, uh, two legal lots, but it's a uh, it's narrow at the road and it kind of goes back. Items as it goes back. Uh, consequently, we don't have the frontage necessary. Uh, but as I said before, we can create the frontage that would require putting in a cul de sac right. that will involve quite a bit of site work, a lot of impervious surface, um, a lot more disruption I would submit to the neighborhood. And aesthetically, um, it wouldn't look great either. I would submit. So the hardship here is that. Um, if the if the board did not grant this variance, uh, and we go forward with the with the cul-de-sac, it would clearly be more expensive for my client. Uh, but I think it would also be um, worse for the neighborhood having a, a full-blown cul-de-sac in there. The plan, if this were to be approved, we just have two driveways, one going into the, the, the lot that's outlined in orange, which is the front house, and then the second house would be house would be down the back of the of the line in this yellow. Okay. Part. The driveway would come up to the line here, back to there. So uh, that's the that's the main argument with respect to hardship, and, and I know hardship is, is something that the board looks at very carefully. But clearly, it's it's attributable to the shape of the lot, and it's um, there's no question that were the variance not to be granted, um, there would be a substantial cost to my clients, and I would suggest also a substantial cost to the to the general area. Um, 
I don't think it, uh, effect, it derogates from the intent of the bylaw. The intent of the, 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 the bylaw is to ensure there's certain spacing between houses so everybody has some privacy. Uh, here we're going to have two houses on 51,000 square feet of land um, under, the, under Burlington's bylaws. I would suggest that that's plenty of spacing, plenty of um, ability to, to have privacy from both both the new house, uh, both new houses. And um, it's not detrimental to the neighborhood. I would suggest it's actually better to the neighbors um, to do it this way through a variance than, like I said, with a full blown uh, cul de sac. Um, so that, in a nutshell, Mr. Chair, is the um, is the merits of the argument. Um, hey. I guess Mr. Manfred is here this evening. He's able to answer any particular questions the board might have. Um, the only question that I had I'll, before I throw it out to the board is, is the uh, the, the Bill Ricca part of that? Is there is it is part of the property in Bill Ricca? Part of the property is actually that's not that uncommon. Um, Along town lines, I know there's some houses up off of Fairfield, I mean, uh, Wilmington Road that have backyards in, into Wilmington. Um, it's still square footage. Okay. Um, it's funny because it depends on where the bedrooms are, as to, for instance, where your kids go to school. Right. It's funny they, they kind of get into that. But I think the plan here is we put this, the structure entirely in Burlington. Uh, and there's plenty of room on the Burlington side of the town line. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to. Throw it out to the board yeah, here, and Jim, uh, Jim I'll you. Um, I don't think I have any questions at this point. I'm good. All right, thank you, Adam. Um, no questions, just questions to the point. I think um, I agree with the fact that it best fits the neighborhood as driveways rather than the cul-de-sac. Yeah, Joseph. Uh, is lot one a total of twenty thousand square feet, not including the Billerica portion? Parcel B, as it shows on this plan, maybe it says one on that, I'm not sure. That says lot one on one. Okay, it says uh, it's, yeah, that's a total of 31,133 square feet of land. It doesn't break it up into Burlington and, and Dorica. Just eyeballing it, I would say maybe less than a third, 20% might be in Dorica, the rest of it is Burlington. Um, but again, uh, it's the doesn't have to be in Burlington, it just has to be the, the, the lot of land. So just a matter of square footage, whether it's in one town or the next. Right, Charles? Question. Um, I, you know, I'd definitely like to hear from the public to see if anybody's here from this application, but uh, from my um, perspective, you know, lot splits are tough. There's there's never really any, any real hardship. Um, and this one specifically, you know, I think does derogate from the intent of the bylaw um, by only having 40 feet of frontage on each. Um, I think that the whole intent is to have um, space. You know, the cul-de-sac would kind of uh, um, do that a little bit better. Um, that being said, that's all I have right now. Okay. All right. Well, I, will, uh, I, I, uh, I, I don't have any problem with it uh, at this time, but uh, I'm going to hear from the public. Is there anybody here from the public who is... Uh, here to speak on behalf of or against this project. Yes, sir. Come, come right up to the uh, hot seat. The hot seat. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, hearing me out today. I do wish I knew it was a Zoom meeting so I could be in pajama pants and you wouldn't know. But. <laughs> Um, my name is Dan Healy. Uh, I live at 50 at 52 Frank Swyman Road, Road, right next door. Um, bought the house three years ago for my mother. Once I turned 18, I moved back and forth. Me and my wife decided Burlington was best for us. Part of why is because when you drive around Burlington, you can tell the difference from other towns. You, know, you can drive through Hoover and you know you're not in Burlington. Okay. Right? Part of that is because of the frontage laws. And I think we need to stand up for that. I do have, uh, this is my lot of land. And where they propose to build their house, the second house in the back, right. will have direct views into every back window in my house, which will include my one-year-old sunroom, my kitchen, and my own bedroom, which we have expanded all those windows, you know? Um, I think... Now I have a tiny little ranch. 
and it's right here, it's 912 square feet. So there's three of us already living there and my mother when she visits from Texas, right? Um, if my family gets any larger, we're either gonna have to add on or move. How do you, this is definitely impacting my property value when you walk out back and you see a house in the backyard. Now, and I, I will concede that for, you know, maybe three to six months of the year, it won't be that big of a problem. But in between our properties is mostly birch trees. And those birch trees lose their leaves very early and get them very late. My neighbors over there, who they've been my neighbors, uh, the Andersons, since my mother bought the house when I was in first grade in 92. Um, we have had plenty of conversations across those trees. You know what I mean? It's I watch their kids jumping in their pool. So now to add another house with direct view. Exactly. Is there a buffer there? In other words, uh, so they described it sort of three to six months out of the year, but what? So there's a stream that runs in between and eventually it goes into my, my land. Right there, it dips down and there's some trees growing there. But when those trees don't have the leaves, there is no buffer. So I, mean, I will look out my bedroom window and I will see you know, the people in that other house. It does greatly affect my family. Um, also with where they plan on putting the driveway coming up from all the other side. Again, my one-year-old son, those headlights are gonna be going right into our bedroom windows. And I know that because the Andersons have always brought in trucks to and on their property. And that's always bothered us that those headlights when they go drive back. Um, also, I know that the back of their property similar to mine because it's not on their, um, I don't see it here on their plan, but there's a big pond there. Uh, it's commonly referred to as the cost pond. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it, but a lot of the hockey players just skate there when I was a kid. I did too. And a lot of, a lot of my hockey player friends used to school me on that pond, <laughs> but um, that's not on here. And that is directly next to it. So there's a lot of flooding that goes on down there. Um, and if they're going to be building up a house, where is that flooding going to be going? Is that going to impact my yard more? You know? And then because of that pond, I was wondering if, if they even contacted conservation or anything. Because there is uh, painted turtles, snapping turtles, two great blue herons, you know, ducks, geese that we all go out there, you know? Part of my property line does go right into the pond. Do you want to respond to any of that? Uh, sure, I'd um, be happy to. Um, with respect to uh, conservation, um, if we are successful at this level, then we have then have to go to the planning board under a uh, subdivision um, application. Uh, and when you go before the planning board under subdivision, uh, Board of Health is involved, conservation is involved, um, all the other boards and departments are involved. So at that level, um, we would have to deal with conservation because clearly we're going to be within 100 feet of wetlands given the pond. So, um, so we haven't, but the reason is, is that that doesn't happen until the next step if we get to the next so step. So let me ask you this. Do you have to go to planning? If you get your variances, we still have to go to planning? We still have to go to the planning board under subdivision um, approval. Because the two lots that were being that are being created here do not have 100 feet of frontage, even though this board has technically deemed them legal lots, we still have to go to the planning board to get approval to create those lots on a plan that can be recorded at the registry of deeds. Um, and like I say, that subdivision uh, review process involves Board of Health, um, which deals with runoff and things of that nature, um, conservation, which will deal with wetlands, potential wetlands issues within 100 feet, they'll, they'll, they'll issue an order of conditions. So let me ask you this, because I, I guess I'm sort of jumping the gun, but but I'm, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, this gentleman's concerns, uh, what could be done to kind of alleviate uh, sure. some of those concerns? I, 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 like I said, the first, uh, the, the couple of having conservation and, and potential flooding, that, those will be dealt with at the at the next level by the planning board in the event we get there. I was just chatting with my client as, as he was speaking about um, some of the issues about screening and things of that nature. We're willing to put um, screening evergreen trees, arborvitaes or whatever everybody wants to do in between uh, this gentleman's lot and 
the construction site over there. Um, and if the board were to make that a condition of, of the approval, that would then flow through to the planning board and then would have to uh, be part of the, uh, we couldn't, couldn't get um, occupancy permits until all that work was done. So does that make you feel any better? I, and just not to interrupt Mr. Chairman, but yeah, go ahead. I'm not familiar with, with this, obviously like these two guys probably are. Right. And my suggestion, I mean, I don't know, we're talking two trees or 20 trees or where they're gonna be. Right. Uh, we'd be willing to, to live with the condition that the site client, if we get final approval, we'll, we'll, we'll meet with um, the neighbor and, and we'll put whatever screen that you feel is appropriate or necessary to, to give you some privacy of your house. I just don't know enough about the lot to say, we'll put them here, 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 and here. Isn't that something the planning board does though? Don't they get down to the nitty gritty in that? Oftentimes, oftentimes they do when those, when those, when those concerns are raised at the planning board level. Um, if you, if you include it in your conditions, it gives it a little bit extra teeth when it gets to the planning board. Yeah. I'm going to hear from the rest of the, the other members here. Uh, are you, are you done, sir? Did you want to add anything more to, to, uh, your presentation? Um, no, I believe, I believe I'm done. Thank you for hearing me out. Uh, I'm going to hear from the other, uh, I'm sorry, Charles. You need to ask if anybody else. Oh, does anybody else have anything to uh, speak on behalf or against this project? Uh, member of the public. So I'm gonna keep the public hearing open and I'm gonna, uh, is that appropriate, uh, Joellen, or? Yeah, you can, yeah. Can I close it? Do you already ask everybody their opinions? I did ask, but I, I wanted to hear from, it seems like uh, Joseph wants to say something. So I, I thought I would let him speak again. You want to say something, Joseph? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I don't see in a topography plan or driveway set. I don't know if you had that plan there. Because, you know, I know his concerns, you know, it's going to be a large driveway to go back to lot B, you know, what run off and you know, lot A there. I know it's not. So uh, you're saying you it's part of planning board and all you know, conservation, but you think we need that information in order to? I don't know. Do, uh, I'd like to. You know, you'd like to see it. So I'm, I'm I know. I him personally. I would like to see it because yeah. I know that if everything's going to be raised up, it's going. Yeah. I, I just put it. he's uphill to do it, right? Yes. Well, if you want to see what the value is. I have a plan with Topo. I'm not sure if, if that's what he's asking. I do have a, a plan that has a topography in terms of the. So were you saying, saying you have something that shows the, that? Because I think what Joseph is saying is that he's looking for a plan, right? Yeah. It's a, you know, well, like a, because it's, I mean, he is, I would need someone to interpret it for me. And water is yeah. down. <laughs> all that asphalt pavement. Joe, I got a topo map here if you want to look at that. If that'll, if that'll. That's a different language to me. So while he's looking at that, Tom, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like Joe, all right, uh, and, and in terms of what you presented thus far, would it make sense to show where that prop, where that house is going to be located? All right, in other words. Well, there's, there, there, there's, there's, there's the, uh, the buildable area, yeah. the envelope is there. Those dotted lines show the, setbacks. show the, um, the setbacks all the way around. So it's got to be within, let's see it. But in these, with these, in these dotted lines, that's 15 feet. Build an envelope. The thing he wants to know is what. Yes, yeah, so the driveway going up. So this has got a shed somewhere. Right. But, and so you're talking more in terms of how the, the water is going to. Yeah, you're to the left of the property up. downhill, correct? No, he's to the right. Go to the right. To the right. So he's. So the driveway. 
Alright, right, so here we are right here. He's here. That's what I'm saying. That drive is going to be coming up. You know, rides run off into my land, into the stream that already floods, and then it's another thing I'm worried about it, you know, is which they said they can provide the privacy. But. Yeah, there's multiple. 15, 4. Oh, it's a. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do you think that we need more information in terms of where that, where the structure is going to be located? Yes. This is 10 feet lower than this. Right. right? So this water is just going to yeah. oh, I, fall I off. I got that. Impact him. Yes. But will it help us to see something more? That's all. Or are you saying you're just against it? It's, it's more planning board. Then it is us. We're only. Then it is us. Right, right. We, we give this to him. And okay. He suffers. <laughs> no, no. But they got to get through the planning board, right? Having heard uh, from the public, uh, take a motion to, uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf or against this project from the public? Having heard no one, uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. Public hearing. Second. Second. Uh, roll call vote, Jim. Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. And I'm, I'm in favor of the public hearing is closed, and so I will take a motion. Uh, is it only a motion in favor? In favor or, or opposition yeah, to? Yeah, or? Yeah, for the if you're looking for more information, if you think there's a need for more information, then then uh, we'll we'll hear from you. Uh, yeah, I would I would request a continuance then for more more information. So I'll, it, would it be to the next meeting on August third? Would that be? Hi, twentieth. Twentieth, July twentieth. So, um, Tom, what are your what are your thoughts? Um, what? Just so I know, what additional information is, would the board be looking for? Adam? Well, uh, personally, I would just uh, like a chance to review the map that we were presented with the topography today. Okay. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know whether this is possible, Tom, whether you can produce something that shows where the location of that house will be. I know you say it's within that buildable area. Is there any way you can give us something more definitive about that? Or? Yeah, I'm sure I'm not. You can locate the neighborhood to the right to see how that impacts him. Sure. Maybe, yeah. maybe uh, I don't know, uh, maybe showing where DeCoste Pond is and how the. You know, I, I didn't play hockey, Mark. I don't know. Where <laughs> <laughs> um, we can certainly do that. The. Um, I can just tell you roughly the dotted footprint of the house with the with the town law line in the back. The house will be locate, located in that square area. Right. That's right. center. Right, the center of it roughly, but you know, give or take. Right. We can yeah. provide something in writing if the board wants, but that'll just give you a general idea. Sure. But we want it, it, it's going to be all in Burlington and it's going to be obviously within that footprint. So that's where it would have to be. We can always if it's okay for me to yes absolutely what we can do we can always design that house to a point where none of the bedrooms or view will be facing the gentleman's home we can create it that that's where the parking would be and the house would sit okay. sort of facing the left side of the property versus facing the right okay. so it's going to be so there will be no uh, direct view from anyone being in the house looking towards the drummers, we can easily 
I think I, the house you know, it sounds like you're willing to work with the, the gentleman. And so it, does. It's, it still doesn't. Excuse me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it still doesn't, um, you know, address the fact that having a house, when I step on my back porch and now there's a house in my backyard decreases my property value. Yeah. I, I understand, although I, I would. <clears throat> You're still able to go and do this via a subdivision. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In which case, there'll be a cul-de-sac in addition to a driveway going back there. Yep. So, um, I sympathize. I, you know, when when, when you something's going on that hasn't been there, I, I understand. That's that I understand the concerns. But that's the whole point for that the frontage loss too. I understand the subdivision could also be. Stuff. So would you be in agreement, Tom, to put it put it over while uh, the members have? I'm, I'm happy to do with the boards. But if the board would prefer it to be provide something with a with a general idea where the house would absolutely do that, I think Mr. Hanley told me his house was down closer to Francis Wyman. I'll try to get an idea as to how far off okay. Wyman it is. Uh, we'll put some sort of something in writing agreeing to orient the house such that it's this side perhaps is the garage without okay. windows above type of a thing. Um, we'll agree to put the type of screening that we talked about um, at the behest of what Mr. Hanley thinks would be most appropriate and most effective. Yeah. I'll put all of that in writing, which you can, if, if the board um, so chooses, to adopt those as conditions. Um, I know it, it, uh, we still have to go the planning board route, so we've got months to go before, before this is over. Uh, but the Anderson family, I know, is uh, hoping to close on this sooner rather than later. So. Uh, that's what that's the only reason I hesitated because we thought we were going to be in here last month, but because of the yeah. you know, the change of the law there. Yeah. So it's already backed up another few weeks, but I mean if we need another few weeks to, to do what you need, we're happy to do that. That would, that would be great. Thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate it. Just a point of clarification, regardless whether it's a cul-de-sac or a variance, either either option you're still gonna have. Your drainage issues, right? Unless right, and and that again, and yeah. we're also we'll, we'll be before the planning board, and that's that's what they do in conjunction with the board of health, and they'll 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 obviously make us grade the the driveway accordingly. They'll put underwater catch basins, ways to 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 water, to make the water go in a certain direction. And, sure. uh, so they they do have those mechanisms in place. We'll have an engineer creating the plan and. and and that's something the Board of Health always looks at very carefully. Conservation will be looking at the pond and any other wetlands to make sure that those aren't disturbed. Um, so that's all part of the approval process that we that we deal with at the planning board level. So it's not as though we can, if this board were to give us a variance, we could just run out tomorrow and start putting things where we're doing. But again, I'm happy to provide the board with, with the items that you requested. We appreciate that, sir. So, uh, you will I have a motion to continue to the next hearing date. What is it, Joel? Yeah. July 20th. To continue 54 Francis Wyman Road to July 20th. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. I'll have the roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Bye. Uh, zero in favor of the motion to continue to July, next July date. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sure. uh, the next item on the agenda new hearing for 38 Harris Lane. Joseph, could you kindly read that into the record? Aaron 21 18 38 Harriet uh, Lane. Was it Harriet F? Harriet F. Sent it into her. Petitioner of Oswin Napoli for the property located at 38 Harriet F, as shown on the Burlington Assessor's Records, as map number 43, parcel number one. 88-0, the applicant is seeking a variance to construct a garage with a second floor above. 
The proposed addition is to be located 11.7 feet off the left side of the house. Town of Burlington Zone and Bylaw Article Section 5.2.0 will cause a side setback of 15 feet, requiring a variance relief of 3.3 feet. The argumentation in support of this proposal is available for the public inspection as shown on plans filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals, a copy of which is on file with the Town Clerk's Office and the Board of Appeals website, application 21-18. Thank you, Joseph. And there. Good evening, yeah, everybody. I uh, had a PowerPoint, which I was hoping I can show over there, but uh, like I cannot. I don't know. I don't know how, how this thing works here. Um, but we are. Uh, I'm actually going to Polly, uh, homeowner. Um, okay. Having a plan to add on to our existing property, which is a single floor ranch home. Um, we want to add a two car garage towards. Uh, can, I, can I show my laptop screen? If, is that okay? Or are we having them up here on the screen? Oh, you do? Okay, fantastic. Sorry, I did not see that. Sorry. So the files you sent in okay. are part of here. So. All right, fantastic. All right. Um, so you see on the left side, that's where we plan on adding on uh, to the house. It's a standard 24 foot garage. Um, and we want to go all over the top. Of the, house. the right side. So it's, from, right. Yes, from the street, if you're facing the house, it's on the right side, yes. Um, Right, so the way the house is situated uh, with respect to the street is two feet, uh, I think seven inches off in the front, and uh, or two feet three inches off in the uh, two point three feet off in the front and three point three feet off at the back. So we we try different ways of trying to make this work without going through this process, but just the way the house is situated just doesn't. We we, we cannot have. A decent size to car garage, even if we reduce the site setback, um, which is why I you know, put in the request for a variance. Um, I mean, with with respect to uh, you know, once we add on to the overall house, the house becomes almost a three thousand five hundred square foot, uh, you know, to a four thousand square foot house. Um, and any such footprint, house with such footprint, without a two-car garage, loses its, you know, uh, we cannot unleash the full potential of the uh, financial uh, aspect of it without having that. Uh, it would not make sense for us to, you know, proceed with it uh, with a one-car garage. That's why I want to apply for a variance. Okay. All right. Is that the... Uh, that that's really is it. And I will... I'll take questions. Uh, I'll hear from the um, members, uh, Charles. Perfect. Do we have, um, we do have house plans. Yes, yes that's the uh, rendering. Uh, that's a proposed uh, addition. Okay, are there, are there floor plans? I didn't see them in the, on the... No, they're not, not on the application, no. Uh, but I can walk you through if you have any questions. Uh. Um. So the the room on top of the garage is, is the master bedroom, um, and the other three there are going to be three additional rooms spread out over the rest of the house, with a bathroom, uh, with an additional bathroom um, in the middle somewhere around the middle of the house, and then a master suite. Right. Okay, so you're adding the whole second level on as well. That is correct, yes. Yeah, I see any. Uh, my friends and neighbors who, who are most impacted by this project uh, right next door, they're, they're here uh, in support of the project. They to the right of you. That's correct, yes. Um, okay. Um, thank you know, so much. I, I don't have any real questions. I mean, you know, it's only three feet, which to me, you know, 21 feet for a two car garage is, is pushing it. Um, so I see why you're looking, what you're looking for. Um, I don't really have any questions at the moment. All right, thank you, Charles. 
Jim? Can you go back to the um, the, the original drawing you were talking to? Next slide. So next to the garage in kind of the white shaded or gray shaded. So that's the existing house. Right. I guess my question was, can you just move the garage over three feet or four feet? Oh, you mean to cut so, it the existing? Right. So we have an existing basement uh, underneath the sunroom. It just makes it a whole different proposition to remove an existing square, you know, footprint. Fill in the foundation, it just doesn't make the sound. What about did you try pulling forward the garage to kind of stagger it? We we did, then we don't meet the frontage. Uh, there's we cannot make it work any other way um, other than how we have it right now. We are right now. Okay. Exactly on the line in terms of the front setback. Okay. Can move it any even an inch the other way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Adam. Um, the only question I have at the moment in the advertisement, it only looks like it's talking about the eleven point seven feet on the side. Uh, the diagram it looks like it's showing a twenty four point eight from the front. Is that something that would have to be in there too if the setback is 25? Would we have to have a second list of that? Yeah, but, but we only realized this after our plot plan, uh, you know, the, the second person, he, he put this down on the plot plan. So our design, we are definitely not going to go on the front. We'll, we'll pull that back a couple of inches. It's not a problem at all. Okay. So we'd have to intentionally showing up that way, which was not planned to be that. Yeah, the new site plan showing that. I, I do not know. No. But the only variance we have. That one showing it, I can't read it from here. So that's the Yeah, on the corner, um, right at the extreme corner, it's 24.8 instead of 25. So are you saying you're going to move it so that it? It won't be 24.8. Yeah, it will meet the setback in the front. It won't be 24 points, it'll be 25 in the front. Yeah. But, but what uh, Joseph is saying is that what it shows uh, on the plan. 24. Yeah, but. Um, so let's, Charles, do you have uh, some commentary? Yep. Um, so if it was to get approved, um, I'm not saying that it will, but if it, 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 if it was to get approved, then we would be just approving the side setbacks that's, um, that's it. I, I imagine that he would he's going to need a new um, plot plan show in the front at 25 feet um, before they give him a building permit so um, I don't think that really concerns us as far as the side setback um, yeah. okay. for this application All right Joseph do you oh I'm sorry Adam were you done no no that answers my question thank you Joseph Rendering, I think it's a great addition to the neighborhood. That's uh, the lots are undersized as it is, and neighbor to the right is happy. I think that's you know, a nice addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. I, I, uh, are you all set, Joseph? Yes. Yeah. I I don't have any uh, problems, but this is a public hearing, so I shall open it up to the public. Uh, is there one anyone here that wants to either speak for or against this project? All right, so if you want to come up, sir, and uh, take the uh, microphone, and we're happy to hear from you. Can you? I have to introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, my name is Bob Sullivan. So I look, I live at 40 Harriet Ave, which is the lot to the right of his. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem with anything that he's shown me, anything I'm seeing here tonight. Um, I agree with the first gentleman. We're talking about three feet. That's all we're talking about. 
can't take a look, and I don't really think you can see on this one of the, the pictures he has there, but he has an aerial view here. If you take a look at the circumstance that involves his house and my house, you'd see that my house and his house right now are roughly 50 plus feet apart because I have a side yard of probably six to eight feet, a 20 foot wide driveway, another six to eight feet to the property line. Then we get to his property. So even with that three foot uh, variance, you're still gonna have significant space between the two houses that anybody driving down the street isn't gonna say, oh my God, you're building on top of each other. So that's highly unusual for Burlington to have, to have 50 feet between well, homes in that neighborhood. We're, well, it's because of our lot size. We're fortunate. We probably have the biggest lot on that side of 128. Yeah. We have about 17 and a half thousand square feet. So the way everything's laid out in our lot, it just naturally worked out. There is this huge space between our house and his house. So, uh, and again, I, Joseph said it, it's a great addition. If you look at some of the, the houses that have been built there in the last five or six years, very similar to what this house looks like, similar in size. Um, and he's he's building on my side, so <laughs> if I don't have a problem with it, I can't imagine anybody else would have a problem with it. All right, good. All right, thank you, sir. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So again, a public hearing. Does anyone else here speak on behalf or against this project? Having heard none, uh, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, do I have to close the public hearing before I take a motion? I do. No. Someone needs to make a motion. Okay. I'll, I'll hear. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded and take a roll call vote. Uh, Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. And Myself, all in favor of closing the public hearing, and I'll uh, I'll take a motion. Make a motion to approve thirty eight Harriet Ave as advertised for the side request for the side the side setback. Second. Eight. Um, sorry. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I would just suggest that we um, um, add the plot plan in there that's dated uh, okay. June, June 27, 2018. Great. The uh, motion is uh, amended to, to reflect that, and uh, we'll take a, a vote, a roll call vote, Jim. Is that all right? <laughs> did, I, did I do that correctly, Joanna? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. Myself? 5 0 in favor? Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. Oh. Last item on the uh, agenda today is a new hearing okay. for. 130 Middlesex Turnpike. He's online. This gentleman is online. We shall hear from you, sir. Hello, uh, Rich Pretorius, Pretorius Electric and Sign, West Bridgewater, Mass. Uh, here for Sinesta City Suites at 130 Middlesex. Um, we're proposing, well, they've done a, um, a name change. And uh, from Candlewood Suites to Sinesta Simply Suites. Um, Seeking relief uh, for the large sign on the fourth floor facing Middlesex Turnpike. Um, basically, the same size as the Candlewood Suites, which was approved, I think, back in 2000, maybe. Um, also, we have a um, canopy over the entrance um, that they want to uh, recover with the uh, Sinesta Simply Suites logo on it. Um, the wall sign on the fourth floor um, is oversized uh, due, um, according to the uh, town bylaw uh, sign laws. 
um, but anything smaller than this probably wouldn't be seen from Middlesex Turnpike. Um, seeing the, the hotels up on a hill and set back, you can barely see the hotel from the road, and they have to you have to um, access the um, the hotel from the um, business park out back around the corner. Um, so they would that that size sign is pretty much needed um, for that elevation. And the other sign, the canopy, is directs people to the entry to the hotel because uh, as you when you come into the parking lot, actually if you come into the parking lot, you can't see the sign on the wall. And, um, I just want to make sure you can hear me, right? Trying to get it up. Or do you want to share? I'm not sure if I can bring it up on my end. Is that what you wanted, or did you want the? I should probably have the um, the elevation drawing showing the sign on the building. You have it. Yeah. Um, That's the sign there. Yep. Yeah. And then um, there's another page showing it superimposed on the building itself. Have it? Yeah, we, we do have it. Yeah. Are you have referring it? to this this one here? The pictures? Yeah. Yes. You, yes. Don't have you don't have the we, we do have them, sir. Okay. As you can see, the uh, the existing Candlewood Suite sign was basically the same size as the sign proposed. Okay. Right. Are you done with your presentation, sir? I'm sorry. I did. If I was, if you had any questions, I was wondering. Um, okay. There's a. Um, I'll, uh, I'll hear from uh, other members of the board. Jim. Oh, actually, Charles. I'll hear from you first. Sure. Um, I don't really have any questions. It, it seems like the the signs are are the same or similar size to the original signs on the building. So I don't really have much of a concern with them. All right, thank you, Charles. Tim? Um, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Just the um, the sign over the front entrance is not illuminated, correct? Um, it's on an awning? It's an awning, yes. I, I think there may be some lights shining down. It's like a, a, an egg crate to light the entryway. So it may actually light the awning to some extent. Yeah. <clears throat> But not internally. It's 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 behind it, but it's I think it's more for the um because the underside is a crate, and it lights up the you know your entryway there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Adam. Um, no questions. I agree. It's pretty straightforward. Just replacing the same footprints as the previous signs. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Joseph. No question. I also agree with the rest of the members. I, I don't have any problems uh, with this, but being a public hearing, uh, I'm going to open this up to the public. Is there anyone here to speak either for or against this project? Having heard none, having heard none, I will take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Having taken a motion and it's, and it's seconded, uh, we take a roll call vote on the uh, on, on the motion. Uh, Jim. Aye. Adam. 
Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. My uh, vote in favor uh, to close the public hearing. So uh, I will take a motion. I move uh, to approve the signs for 130 Middlesex like Turnpike uh, with the file name 277169-R7 as advertised. Okay. And is there any uh, lumen limitation on those? Uh, on with that lighting? A, with any illumination uh, restricted to no more than 90 lumens. Okay. Having, uh, having heard the motion, I will take a roll call vote. Second. Sorry, Sorry I was just seconding it. Sorry. All right. I will take I will take a motion. We need the vote now. Just seconding it. But it, sorry. I was just sorry. I was just seconding it. Seconded the motion. All right. Motion has been made and seconded. And roll call. Roll call. Jim. Aye. Adam. Aye. Joseph. Aye. And Charles. Aye. All right. So it was granted. Sorry. So just let them know it was granted. Motion, motion is granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Take a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Appeals for June 1st, 2021. Take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion's been uh, made and seconded. Uh, take a roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. <coughs> Myself, 5-0. In favor, motion to approve the minutes for June 1st is allowed. The next motion is uh, a call for motion for the to approve the minutes of the Board of Appeals for June 15th, 2021. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of June 15, 2021. And we will take a roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Adam? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Charles? Aye. Myself? 5 0. Those uh, minutes have been approved. Any other uh, items on the agenda? Gentlemen, nothing further right, than I'll, I'm sorry, Charles. Say, thanks for taking over for me for. Uh, uh, well, I, um, last, I, don't, I, don't appreciate, I don't appreciate you putting me in this. But. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had a little uh, knee accident on Saturday, so I. Right. No, sorry way to hear that. no way I could have gotten in there today. So. All right. Appreciate well, it. Well, we know you, you know you would have gotten here yeah, if you could. Yeah, yeah. Take a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>